Comics in, in honor of Spider-Man Homecoming coming out in July. I spent month by month reviewing every single Spider-Man movie coming out, starting with the very first Spider-Man movie that came out in 2002. Now, now, I remember when this movie came out. Like, I, I remember I saw a trailer for this movie on TV, and I was just blown away. Because at the time, you know, I was already a huge fan of Spider-Man. I grew up with the 90s cartoon. Spider-Man, he was one of my favorite... Well, he still is. He's one of my favorite superheroes because he's just... He's relatable. And so when I saw that in theaters, like, I was just blown away. I remember I was... It, the movie came around came out around my 11th birthday, and my, and my dad took me to the theater. He took me to a midnight showing to go see that movie because he was a fan of Spider-Man as well. And, and the movie also came out at a time where the comic book genre was having somewhat of a resurgence because you also got to think at the time, the comic book genre died of the hint of this, but then was resurrected with movies like Blade, X-Men, and then Spider-Man, that original Spider-Man movie. It was the, pretty much the, tr the, the combination of what we were expecting from this new comic book renaissance we were having at the time. Like like Blade, X Men, and Spider Man, like that was the holy trinity of the of the comic book renaissance we had in the early two thousands. And of course, I had X Men on VHS, and I loved that movie to death. But then Spider Man, like I'm telling you, it was just something about that movie that just hit me the right way. Just I'm telling you, I have not been mesmerized with a superhero movie until ten years later from there with the first Avengers movie that came out in 2012. Now, now granted, Spider-Man 2 is my favorite of the Spider-Man movies, but I held a special place in my heart for that first Spider-Man movie because because it's one of my favorite movies of all time for a reason, because it was that movie that, that's that, because our, I had loved movies before then, but that was the movie that, that told me, hey, like, I think I want to have a future in this. Like, I love movies for this. It, it, it was the first movie that dawned me, like, there was a director, there was a writer, there was a producer, a, director of photography, an editor, a cameraman, and all that. So yeah, my brothers, they knew I loved Spider-Man so much that I asked for Spider-Man on DVD when it came out for Christmas of 2002. Christmas of 2002, the first three DVDs I ever got was Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, <laughs> go figure, Scooby-Doo, the live-action movie, I'm liking for nostalgic reasons, but yeah, it sucked, <laughs> and that first Spider-Man movie. I remember when I got this, I, 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 it was the first time I saw special features and behind the scenes and deleted scenes and screen tests and gag bloopers. I wore this DVD out. I, I think there was not one week or not one day where I popped this in and just watched the movie or, or he, hell, even on Fridays when I got out of school, I popped this in every Friday and just watched the movie and then watched the special features. Like I ate this up and I was just so fascinated by it. That's how much I love this movie because it was the movie that, that that were that got me into filmmaking and behind the scenes. Okay, so enough about how much I love the movie. Let's actually talk about the movie. So uh, yeah, we all know the story of Peter Parker and how he becomes Spider-Man. He gets he gets bit by the radioactive spider and he starts getting spider-like abilities and and he starts crawling up on walls. Yeah, we all know that origin story, but one of, one of the things I love about this movie is pretty much the Peter Parker side of it. And Tobey Maguire, to me, he portrayed that side perfectly. To me, he is the best portrayal of Peter Parker because when, when we first see him in that opening scene, we, we see him, he's chasing after the bus and everyone's making fun of him for it. But then Mary Jane Watson, she says, stop the bus, he's been chasing us since... Freedom Boulevard, whatever the hell that street thing. <laughs> then he gets on the bus, everyone's throwing paper at him and just scolding him. To me, he was believable as Peter Parker. He was he, he was believable for portraying that nerd side of him. He, you know, he's a he's real smart, but you know, he's a bit of an outcast. So that so that when he so that when he's bit by the radioactive spider, he got started getting spider like abilities. It's like he's a whole new person, and he has muscles. He doesn't need his glasses anymore. And not only he's crawling by walls, but he has organic web shooters, you know, he doesn't have the web shooters he made himself. Which at the time, I thought, you know, I thought, I, I always thought that web always came out of his wrist because, you know, he has spider-like abilities. So I would think, you know, spider webs would come out of him, but hey, hey, hey I rolled with it though. But another thing I like about Peter Parker and Spider-Man in general is his story arc, is how... Is how he starts as one person, and then by the end he ends up as a different person. And the particular story I like about him is how you know he he was a nerd, and then he got spider-like abilities, and at first he uses it for selfish reasons. You know he like he wants to he wants to buy a car for the woman he loves, Mary J. Watson, and then he and then he comes up with his spider suit and everything, and he starts to go to the wrestling ring, and then his uncle tries to tell him, hey. Hey, you're starting fights in school, but you know he gives him the you know, with great power comes great responsibility speech. And then, and then he, and then Peter Parker throws it back in his face. 
Now, long story short, he wins the fight, but the guy wouldn't pay him, and so and so he gets and so the guy gets robbed, and, and then Peter Parker lets him go. But um, but unfortunately, the guy that he let go kills his uncle, and Peter Parker is out for revenge. And then he comes to find out that the person he let go was the guy that killed his uncle. So now immediately he feels guilt over that. But then he starts remembering his uncle's speech. With great power comes great responsibility, and he vows never to use his powers for selfish reasons ever again. And then he uses it for good to save people, and, th and hence that's when Spider Man is born. And I just love the part where, you know, we get that montage of Peter Parker where he just becomes Spider Man and then he's saving people, and then we get Spider Man from the people of New York's point of view. Like, pe some people are like, he's, he's so cool. And, you know, he's leaving us saying, from your family neighborhood, Spider Man. And then you get that one guy that says, like, he stinks and I don't like him. All right, let's talk about some of the other characters. We got Willem Dafoe, who plays Norman Osborn. And, you know, Norman Osborn, he owns his own company called Oscorp's Industries. He's trying to come up with a formula that pre that's pretty much huge performance enhancers for the military. But then that doesn't go well, so he tries it on himself. And, yeah, that didn't go quite quite as he expected. But, hence, that turns him into the Green Goblin. And I just love Willem Dafoe's portrayals of it. He's good at portraying that split personality side of him. Like, I love that one scene where he's talking in the mirror to himself, like Norman Osborn is talking to the Grim Goblin side of him, where he's like, Remember, you little accident in the laboratory? Bingo. Me, your greatest creation, giving you what you've always wanted. Power beyond your wildest dreams, and it's only the beginning. But Willem Dafoe, he is also great as the Green Goblin as well, and pretty much like, to me, that's my favorite portrayal of Green Goblin over Dane DeHaan's and the Amazing Spider-Man, but we'll get more into that some other time, though. But some people, some people give that performance back because, you know, because of his suit, he's just wearing a metal, um, a helmet, and the scene is all green, he looks like a green Power Ranger, but I let that roll because, honestly, like, like, really, like, I think that's the best way they can go, because, like, if you did it the same way they did it in the comics, it would just look silly and stupid, so... I think this is the best you can get. And of course, and of course, Norman Osborn has a son who's, who also happens to be best friends with Peter. And I, and I like James Franco's performance of Harry Osborn. Because, you know, they're, they're best friends. Essentially, they're both outcasts because Harry Osborn, he's rich and then Peter Parker, he's, he's poor. But, but at the same time, he's like, there's something about the two of them that click because they're both outcasts for those two different reasons. But then, but then once Harry introduces Peter Parker to his father, he, Norman Osborn becomes... Here it becomes just because it's like Norman, Norman Osborn, he's giving all this attention to his to Peter Parker that he doesn't really give to Harry because you know both of them are scientists, they both have the same interests, but Harry doesn't. And then, of course, let's talk about Kirsten Dunst as Mary Jane Watson. I say not the best performance, but I still like it for for because it works for in this movie because you know Mary Jane Watson. Like, her home life is pretty much not the most optimistic thing to go to, but then once she goes outside of that, she goes to school, she's popular, she's a completely different person. She's dating Flash Thompson, who, unbeknownst to me at the time, is played by Joe Magnolia, our future death stroke, stroke in the new Batman movie that's, we don't know if it'll ever come out. <laughs> but, you, but you know she's a different person at school because it's like she's trying to escape from what for what she doesn't like about her home life. And then she finds a silver lining in Peter Parker because whenever she's around Peter Parker, she's able to be herself. And of course, Peter Parker, he's always had a crush on Mary Jane. I mean, he says in the first scene, the, that girl, the girl right there, Mary Jane Watson, the woman I've loved since before I even liked girls. <laughs> but I say the only negative I have about her is, you know, it's just like, she's just this really, she has a really stupid girl crush because she's been saved by Spider-Man numerous times and. And at the time, you know, she, eventually she starts dating Harry Osborn at the at the dismay of Peter Parker. But you know, she really likes Spider Man. Like she's like, I see saved my life twice, and I never even seen his face. So at that point, you gotta think, okay, do you really like Spider Man, or are you just having that little girl crush? But pretty much, pretty much, one of the negatives about Mary Jane is like she's she's one of those girls that she doesn't know what she wants. Like one moment she likes Harry Osborn, but then she likes Spider Man, and then she starts having feelings for Peter Parker. Once Peter Parker starts telling her about Spider Man and how he takes pictures for her, but pretty much Kristen Dunst did a good job at portraying Mary Jane for like you know she she's a different girl at home and then different girl at school, but then she's she's just that lost girl that's just trying to find a silver lining, and then she finds in Peter Parker and a good love interest for Peter Parker and Spider Man. Let's talk about Peter Parker's aunt and uncle, Uncle Ben and Aunt May. Now, of course, this is probably my favorite portrayal of Aunt May, and I'm not saying that for nostalgic reasons, but because like Aunt May, she's like she she's like that cool little 
She's like that cool grandmother or aunt that you know she's nurturing, she's caring, she 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 has great wisdom and like there's a particular I'm going to come back to that in a moment. But let's talk about Uncle Ben. You know, he's that good uncle that's just wanting to do your by his family. Like, I just, like, I love his introduction where he's like, the Lord said, let there be light. And voila, let there be light. After 20 years at the electric plant, I am on my ass. May, I'm 60 years old. I'm too old for computers. And besides, I got a family to provide for. And then I just love the relationship between, between him and Aunt May. It's brief, but, you know, it's just that couple that, you know, that's just trying to get by, you know? Like, I gravitate towards that because it's relatable, and that's one of the reasons I love Spider-Man, because he lives in a relatable world. And so when Uncle Ben dies, you it's, you really feel for it, and you really feel some type of mo emotion. But one of my favorite scenes in the movie is a scene that I really did kind of connect with more than anything, because, you know, Peter Parker, he lost his uncle. Recently, I lost my dad last year, and it was the day Peter Parker graduated from high school. You know, he's just sitting in his room, and he's crying. He's saying, like, he really missed him today tells his aunt he tried his uncle tried to tell him something really important and he threw it in his face and I can I can tell he was really feeling that but the thing that but the one statement that really like connected with me the most is when she when she tells him when she tells him he you loved him and he loved you he never doubted the man you were grow up to be and you were meant for great things you were dis you won't disappoint him it was like that that line right there that really gravitated towards me because it's like you know there's times where kind of doubting myself and if I ever make my dad proud and you know it's just it's just one of those moments that I've really gravitated towards and you know and of course the last bit of casting that I got to talk about is J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. This was a casting made out of heaven. This is one of the most perfect casting in a comic book. J.K. Simmons was born to play this role. Like, I just love him. He was like, who is Spider-Man? I said, criminal, that's who he is. A French lady, a public menace. What is he doing on my front page? Tomorrow, tomorrow morning, Spider-Man page one with a decent picture this time. Move Conway to page seven. If that doesn't work, then give him 50%. I'll make it 10%. Get out of here! Oh, what is he, Sorry. Look, if we, get a, if we can get a picture of Jill and Robinson, a thug, we, we can certainly get a picture of this weirdo. Put him down on the front page. Cash money for a picture of Spider-Man. Does it want to be famous? Well, I'll make him infamous! Like, look, no words can really explain how much J.K. Simmons was great in this role. Just, you just gotta watch the movie to see, because I'm i sorry, I just can't really talk about it, because it's just one of those things where you gotta see the belief. One of the things I love about the movie is the tone. It wasn't too serious, but it wasn't too goofy and campy. Like, some people some people might compare it to, like, it being, like, a modern-day Superman, but really it's not. Like, it's a... Because this movie came out in the early 2000s, so it, it has a great middle ground right there. And, of course, I love the action in this movie. Like, I love the, like, the quote-unquote Mesa Gray scene where they're at that Unity Day parade and then the Spider-Man and Green Goblin first fight. This fight is one of my favorite action scenes. And, of course, the climax of the movie where he, he pretty much, where Green Goblin gave him a choice, either save Mary Jane or save those children. I love that. And then it segues into the final battle between the two of them. And it gets real brutal, especially for a superhero movie that's, for all intents and purposes, um, tailored to kids, but adults will like it too. And it just got real dark, and I like it. But, and, of course, I got to talk about the director, Sam Raimi. His vision of this movie just worked, and that's one of the reasons the tone of this movie worked is for Sam Raimi's vision, the camera work, the, the cinematography, and just everything about it, it just worked. It was just perfect for what we were trying to do, what they were trying to do. Especially since Sam Raimi, he's, you know, he, he's known for the Evil Dead movies, or he's more of a horror movie director, but some of his horror movie, horror movie tropes as a director worked for this movie, though. I guess, really, if I had any negatives about this movie, I guess it's just the, the special effects. Because some of the special effects don't quite as hold up. Like, there's a scene where, where Peter Parker, he's jumping from building to building, just discovering his powder, powers, and, you know, we just see a clearly CGI Peter Parker that just looks all rubber. Some of the scenes where Spider-Man is flying through the city might be a little questionable. It doesn't completely take you out of the movie because, you know, you still believe that that's actually Spider-Man. So. In the end, the original Spider-Man movie directed by Sam Raimi and starring Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man was pretty much the icing on the cake for a new comic book movie renaissance we had back in the early 2000s. And Tobey Maguire, he was perfect as Peter Parker. He was great as, he was good as Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire's vision worked for this movie. The action was great. This is, to me, like, this is one of my favorite story arcs of a character starting from one place and then ending up to another that I personally gravitated towards to. This was the movie that got me into filmmaking and inspired me to get into filmmaking.
And like I said, even though Spider-Man 2 is my favorite of all the Spider-Man movies, I still hold a special place in my heart for this movie because it got me into filmmaking. And especially looking at this movie now with adult objective eyes, the movie still holds up to me. And for that, I'm going to give that first Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie five stars for it's a masterpiece. Thank you so much for listening and watching and be on the lookout next month for my review of Spider-Man 2. And I can't wait to talk about that movie too because again, that's my favorite of the Spider-Man movies and ooh, yeah, so be on the lookout for that. That's it for the day. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more, check out my channel. The link is in the description below. And be sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and Periscope. Peace. <laughs>